How CC Came to Be Let me tell you the story of how Creative Commons came to be, because copyright was initially also intended to help humanity, and not only enrich industry. Today's copyright restrictions were never meant to be, now they imprison works and intentionally lost the key. We're stuck with this monstrosity keeping works from you and me and ultimately restricting human creativity. Let's start with the Romans, who did not care to control who could copy or share. The effort to make a copy took almost as much as making the original book. The earliest recorded case law on the right to copy dates back to the 6th century. The battle of the book is when people became violent over the ownership of a copy of a manuscript in Ireland. Around 1400, the invention of the printing press made that anyone could print any text. People's hunger for books increased as a growing number of the population could read. Forward to the Middle Ages when governments and church started mingling in who was allowed to be printing. The battle was far bigger than what someone was allowed to make. Freedom of expression was at stake. From England to Italy, France and Germany, an increasing number of works got licensed exclusively, making them protected for infringement for many years after they were printed. Just after the year 1700, copyright was established in England. Cheap books were again history, pushing the poor back into illiteracy. This also sparked a decades-long game of preventing works from entering the public domain. Then in 1774, the Donaldson vs. Beckett fight put an end to all the English extensions of copyright. In 1886, many countries signed the Berne Convention, putting literary and artistic works under international protection. The convention harmonized copyright amongst who signed and enforced strong minimum standards alongside. But it took another 48 years for the law to gain some morality. Authors gained the right to be mentioned and protect their work from being treated derogatory. Europe has taken some strange turns, like in 1995 when, in countries with shorter terms, works regained copyright again after they already entered the public domain. The United States also behaved crazy, because within a century, 70 years copyright extensions came to be, and they waited with signing the Berne Convention until just before 1990. Then came the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act. It was 1998 when that came into effect. Harmonizing with Europe was the argument they used. Freezing works to enter the US public domain by putting works another 20 years in detain. The internet was still in its infancy, but Eric Eldred, an online publisher, already saw what it could be. An unlimited way of sharing knowledge in ways that were not available before. That's why he and many others challenged the CTEA to let work sooner see the light of day. They lost the ruling, but it planted a seed. They saw the need for a new kind of deed. A license to actively share your work around the globe. They called them Creative Commons licenses, licenses of hope. Because that is what happens when works are free, actively fueling creativity, serving and advancing humanity, and create a fairer, more inclusive, open society. Today, Creative Commons is much more than just the licenses. It's a non-profit organization and a global movement with many alliances. Creators, lawyers, educators, researchers, and many, many more are involved, collaboratively working on a better world. 1.6 billion works are currently available to use for free. Videos, music, illustrations, texts, photography, all opened up actively, with licenses that allow or restrict the use commercially, make derivatives or demand you to share your remix accordingly. Now take this story and use it without restriction to publish, translate, adopt, remix, share in any jurisdiction. It's a gift to you, from me, to spread the word of CC. If you've listened so far, you should join the movement and take part. Share your work, join the network, and visit creativecommons.org.